Amen. We greet you in the blessed name of Jesus, the Bethlehem Bay. Today is our fourth Sunday of Advent. The theme for this week is joy. Somebody say joy. Joy. Joy that only Jesus can give. And in that spirit of joy, aren't you glad with me when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, our feet have been standing within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek your good. O Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your very glory dwells. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength, my rock, my redeemer. Sing unto the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. May we joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth sing his praises. Let us make that joyful noise, singing our hymn of praise. Hark the herald angels sing. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconciled. Joyful, joy, joyful, all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With the angelic host proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark, the herald angels sing. Glory to the newborn king. Let us sing these three stanzas to the glory of God.
Let us pray. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory, glory to the newborn king. Peace on earth and mercy mild. God and sinners reconcile. Joyful all ye nations rise. Join the triumph of the skies. With angelic hosts, hosts proclaim. Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing. Glory, glory to the newborn king. Gracious Lord, we come bowing down before you right now. We come, O oh God, with angelic voices, lifting up your name above all names, O oh God. Yes. You indeed are our Emmanuel, O oh God, who is with us. You have been our bridge over troubled waters, O oh God. You have been our rock in a weary land. You have been our help in times of trouble, O oh God. You've been a way where there seemed to be no way. You have been our God that has been with us, and we say thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for waking us up this morning and starting us indeed on our way, and we journey into this place to worship you. We bow down before you. We worship you. We honor you. We praise you. We adore We've come to worship the King, our Christ, the Son of God, our Emmanuel, Jesus. We call you by name, O oh Lord, Jesus, who have been the one who has fixed everything, Jesus, who has healed us in the bed of affliction, Jesus, who has delivered us through many troubles, Jesus, yeah. we call upon your name. And so we've come to worship you, O oh God. We thank you, O oh Lord, for one more day, for another opportunity to gather together in your sanctuary. In this Advent season, O oh God, we reflect on who you are, a God who has granted us your peace, a God who gives us hope. And and now, oh God, the love that continues to flow, we thank you for your grace and mercy that never ends. God, for the joy in being able to call upon your name. Oh God, have your way in this place right now, oh God. Oh God, we pray for those that are sick in body and need healing. We pray, oh God, for our children, oh God, and for families, oh God. We pray, oh God, lifting up all of our needs and cares to you. You are a prayer answering God, and we just want to say thank you. So come, Holy Spirit, right now with all our quickening power. Oh, God, come and lift us from the countenance of feeling downcast and lift us up, oh, God, that we may worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, oh, God, for the ushers that stand at the door. We thank you, oh, God, for those that are working the technology and for the musicians, oh, God, and for the choir. We thank you, oh, God, for these who have come to worship you. We pray, oh, God, that you would be with us, those that are home worshiping virtually, that you would just have your way. God, we come right now asking, oh God, that you will press. bless the preacher man, oh God, bless the word that has been prepared. God, we want to feel your presence. We want to experience the joy of the Lord. Move by your power and your might right now. Break down strongholds, oh God. Help us to praise you like it may be our last time, oh God. We're grateful, oh God. Thank you, oh God, this morning for Jermaine Newman who's here with us. Thank you for his life, oh God, for getting him safely, oh God. Be with him, oh God. We're grateful, oh God, to experience his presence in this place. God, we pray, oh Lord, for those who for whatever reason could not be and wanted to be. Oh God, whatever they stand in need of, oh God, that you will make a way for them. Bless us, oh God. Help us to worship you in spirit and truth. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
that reflection was on hope, then peace, and then love. And today it is on joy. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Isaiah 12, 3 from the NIV. We often become disappointed because things don't turn out the way we hoped. We sometimes expect the holiday season to satisfy us rather than lean on God's love alone. Though there are many broken hearts during this season and across the world, help us to experience your true joy that no one can take away from us. Give us a childlike faith and anticipation of your birth. When days seem long and our hearts feel sad or distant, kindle in us a joyful gratitude of what you have given us and a joyful hope of what is to come. Help us to be glad and exult with all our heart, knowing that you are in the midst. Help us not to be afraid or discouraged. You're re you rejoice over us with gladness, and we sing joyfully because of your love for us. May this live within us today. Christmas should be a time of joy. Today we learn our true joy is in Jesus' birth, not the presents we get. In fact, God tells us that giving is even better than receiving. In the Bible, John the Baptist was sent to prepare the people for the coming of Jesus. He told them to repent of their sins and prepare their hearts for the coming of our Savior. What should we do, they asked. John replied, if you have two coats, give one of them to the one who has none. The message is for us too. If we want to experience the real joy that Jesus wants for us, then we must learn to share. By sharing what God has so generously given to us, we will receive an even greater gift, the gift of joy. So remember, the next time those rough winds sweep through our lives, let's rejoice. It won't be long until we can lift our hearts and laugh in his sunshine. This joy we have, the world didn't give it to us, and the world can't take it away. You see, joy, joy, God's great joy, 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 down in my soul, sweet, beautiful, soul-saving joy, oh, joy, joy in my soul. stand for the reading of the scripture. A scripture this morning comes from Matthew, the second chapter, reading verses 1 through 13. It can be found in your bulletin. And after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the day of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem. Let me also share with you, I'll, I'll, from now on, 
we're, we're looking at the okay. second scripture. I apologize. It's okay. And we, and we also will pledge to you that from now on, the print, to, the print will be large. And we understand that some of us uh, might be visually challenged. It is small print today, but from now on, it will be larger. Let us look at Luke, the first chapter, verses 46 through 56. Mary's song. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. To Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised. Together, Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Amen. You may be seated. The word of God. Somebody say, thanks be to God. Thank you, Reverend Barbara, for lifting up that passage. Uh, that is our focus for this service. We deeply appreciate um, We Thank you, Reverend Dr. Marjorie Jones, for uh, helping to lead us in worship today. Uh, Dr. Jones is doing double duty today. She also helped at the 8 o'clock, and so we're thankful for her as well. And thank you, Reverend Jean, uh, for also lifting up the Advent uh, reflection today, which is on joy. I do acknowledge the Reverend Irma Jean Thibodeau, who is with us. I also acknowledge the licentiates, both Colette Williams and Sarah Smith. Uh, we praise God for the both of you, our ministerial staff. That's it. Uh, and so we give God praise for each of you. Somebody say amen. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. Let me at this time, before I forget to acknowledge, uh, I think we're all family. We are all family, but I do want to, I know that the family of evangelist Christine Yancey, uh, they're with us, and so uh, we'll just stand so we can acknowledge you. And we're thankful that you are here. We praise God for you. Thank you for blessing us today. I also want to acknowledge, uh, still a uh, extended member of Charles Street Amy Church, but he lives now uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio. He's with us today. Stand up, Jermaine Newman. Yeah, we, we all remember Jermaine. It's so good to see you, and we praise God for you today. I greet each of you again in the blessed name of Jesus. Very quickly, just a few notices. Please uh, be attentive to them. First of all, um, we do want to share with you that church school will begin today at 1.30 p.m. It will be virtual. Our church school, the link is in your newsletter that was sent out a short while ago today. That's church school at 1.30 p.m. Those of you, oh, those of you who did not uh, have an opportunity to see the Hamilton Garrett Music and Arts Academy winter concert, give love to to Jesus, give love, I'm sorry, give love on Christmas, but we should still give love to Jesus, amen? Uh, that concert was just, I, I, I just don't have the words, the words of the, of the young people, the young girl, they were just out of this world. I know that a few of you may not have been able to see it. Uh, I, we recognize that there were a few technical difficulties with some of our members uh, as you were trying to watch it. But here's the good news. Uh, the concert will be restreamed today at 6 p.m. Somebody say 6 p.m. So you're going to be home tonight. 
Uh, you won't have to worry about competing with the New England Patriots. There's no football game on tonight, amen? And you can watch this concert at 6 p.m. The link is also in uh, your newsletter that you received uh, this morning. So please, if you didn't watch it last week, you can watch it tonight. Hamilton Garrett Music and Arts Academy, their third annual winter concert, Give Love on Christmas Day. And we acknowledge uh, Jeremy Ruga Flores, who is here, the executive director of the Hamilton Garrett Music and Arts, and to all the staff and to all the young people. This year, our Christmas Eve service, again, will be virtual. We will not have an in-person Christmas Eve service. It will be recorded and it will be presented to you on Friday evening, this Friday, December 24th, Christmas Eve night at 7 p.m., 7 p.m. So tune in, 7 p.m., the link you will also see in your newsletter. That's Christmas Eve service, virtual. We can all watch it wherever we are and be blessed and celebrate together in the spirit of one the arrival of the Bethlehem babe. Amen? Next week, which is the day after Christmas, Sunday, December 26th, we will have worship service, but we will only have one worship service at 9.30 a.m. Somebody say 9.30. Not at 8.30, not at 11.30. We're meeting one combined service. You will need to register, as always, at 9.30 a.m. We do this whenever Christmas is either on Saturday or Sunday. We've done it before, and the Lord will bless us as we meet together in one congregation next Christmas, Sunday, December 26th at 9.30 a.m. And for those of you who will be traveling, uh, Sister Lynette and others, uh, we pray that God will prosper you with travel mercies as you will see your family members. Some have already left. Reverend Andrew is in L.A. and Sister Belinda, Attorney Belinda is down in Georgia. And we're scattered all over. But we pray that that same Holy Spirit that you worship and that empowers you to worship God here will take you wherever you go and will get you there safely so that you can see your family. Amen? I mentioned that the 830 service, uh, how just uh, inspired I was throughout the week, really touched my heart that some of the members called me or texted me wondering, I don't think it was just out of routine, but just out of their eagerness and their love for the church. And they were wondering, Pastor, are, are you going to ask us to uh, give a Christmas gift to the church as we do each year? We present a gift, a financial gift, uh, as we give to our family members, we give to our loved ones. We, we've also, over the years, we've asked all the Charles Street members to give a special Christmas gift over and above your tithes and offering to remember the church as the church still must meet its very heavy obligations coming up. And so, yes, we are. A letter will be sent out this week. We were intending to get the letter out this week for your holiday gift to the church. Uh, some of you may be prepared to give it next week. In that letter will also be a special envelope. You can give it next week or you can give it the following week, whenever, however the Lord blesses you. Uh, whatever you can give. I know some, many have given $100, some a few more, but whatever you can give, whatever it is the gift, and it will tremendously bless the church. So thank you. We are asking every member to give a holiday gift above your tithes and offering to help the church. Amen? We also ask you, please, to remember our brother Charles Gordon. You will... Um, and he needs your prayers today as the, as the worship order prints it. Uh, the Brotherhood or members of the Brotherhood were supposed to sing led by Brother Charles Gordon. Uh, and they're here, they're dressed, Brother Lester Saab, Brother Chris Birch, Brother Henry Johnson. Uh, they were ready to sing, but, but uh, Brother Gordon was rushed to the hospital this morning. And uh, so please keep him in your prayers. Keep Sister Gordon in your prayers as well. We've prayed for him already, but let's pray again. Father, again, 
uh, you told us that we can always come to you and seek your face and petition upon you our very needs. And so we present unto you, Brother Charles Gordon, a faithful member of our music ministry, the leader of this ministry known as the Richard Allen Brotherhood Choir. He wanted to be here today, but God, uh, your will was that he, his health would be restored, that he would be healed, and that he would, uh, would need to, to get the medical care today. So we pray that as he is in the hospital, Lord, that you will just nurse him physically. Do it, God. Heal him as we know you and you alone, you're able to do all things. You are a God of miracles. We know it for ourselves. And so we pray that that blood of Jesus, the blood in 2021 that still works, that blood will heal and touch Brother Gordon right now. In the blessed name of Jesus, we pray. Let God's people say amen. Say amen, somebody. And so we do thank our uh, members of our Voice of Deliverance. They're also doing double duty. Uh, they sang at the 8 o'clock, but they were gracious enough to sing again uh, for the 1115. And so we're thankful that uh, they're with us and that they're singing again. That's Evangelist uh, Lisa Hill, Sister Narissa Smith, and Sister Rolanda Dudley Cowards. Now as we prepare to give of our tithes and offering, Again, we, we can't thank you enough. So if it sounds like a broken record, so let it be. We thank you for your constant giving. You've been very faithful over these 90 plus weeks since we've been in a pandemic. We have not, Charles Street has not missed a, a beat in meeting any of its connectional church, our other obligations. We met them because you have been consistent in your giving. Some of you have already given online for this week. Some of you, you mailed your offering in. Some of you, you brought it in. You put it in the box. But if by chance you have your offering with you now, if you can just raise it high, uh, raise it so Sister Balda will see you representing our stewards and she will come and receive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I see Sister Diane. I see Brother Angelo. I see, yes. Yes, yes, thank you. Mother Shepherd. I see Brother Brother Dave, thank you. Thank you, Licentric Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Mother Parham. Thank you, all of you, for your giving. Yes, it is a blessing to us. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Sister Lynette. Amen. And as Sister Valda will now bring the offerings before the altar, we ask that you will all stand. Shall we all stand? Rain down on us, yes. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Birch. Eternal God, again, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for how you're blessing us. We were only able to give because you gave to us. So we return a portion of our giving back to you. And whatever our needs are, God, we know that you can supply and meet them abundantly according to the riches and glory in your son, Jesus Christ. So we thank you in advance for your meeting our needs and for your blessing us. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
He, the mighty one, has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For he, the mighty one, has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. I want to speak just for a few minutes on the subject. When the mighty meet the meek. When the mighty meet the 
me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, my strength, my rock, and my redeemer. Let all God's people say. I look at Brother Davis, Sister Davis, Brother Lee, Sister Alberta, celebrating 50 years of marriage. I think of the Reverend Dr. Marjorie Jones and Brother Compton Jones, who are now in their 56th year of marriage. Think of Brother Oliver, who was here this morning, who this week is celebrating with his wife 50 years of marriage. When it comes to love relationships between two persons, I've learned, we've all learned, that there is much truth and power to the phrase Opposites attract. I'm not suggesting that these three couples are opposites, but, but there is that truth that opposites attract. We all know of relationships, of couples in our families, of couples among our friends, and couples even here in the church, where the two in that couple are like night and day. They're like oil and water, fire and ice. And yet, as a couple, they typify the eighth wonder of the world because they're still very much lovingly together. But no other, Reverend Thibodeau, no other love relationship is as a truer eighth wonder of the world when it comes to truly opposites attracting than the relationship between God and you. No other relationship, friends, entails the two being as immeasurably incompatible, as distantly different, and as utterly unlike more than the relationship between God and you. Truth be told, Sister McLean, there is absolutely nothing inherently similar and alike between God and us. How can we say that? First and foremost, he is God and you and I are not. We can all say amen to that. We can just end the sermon just right there. While each of us has a true relationship with God, the true miracle in that relationship is that each of us in our relationship with God is so endlessly opposite of God in endless ways. How can we say that? Well, from the moment of our birth, we have always been familiar and full of sin. But God, before there was a beginning, has always been foreign and free from sin. We're always pressed with perpetual uh, perils from period to period. But God personifies purely a perennial and perfect peace. Sister Chris, we, we tussle and we tumble with turbulence and turmoil at every turn, and we toil with troubles on every hand. But God typifies total tranquility. And let's shame the devil this morning and tell the truth by admitting that there are some people that we would not mind if they lived on the other side of the world some people who we deliberately stay away from, and some people that we would never go looking for and we don't want to be seen by them. But God desires everyone to seek his faith. 
God goes looking even for those who we categorize as better left alone. God is always the whosoever will, let him come. We who enjoy an ongoing relationship with God, we are yet so opposite of God in countless ways. She noticed one night, as, as she one day honestly, she looked at herself and then she looked and in seeing the two, she noticed two completely different persons. She saw God in his greatness, honoring her in her humbleness. She experienced the Lord in his largeness, lifting her from her lowliness. Mary marveled at the maker in all of his might, meeting her in her meekness. Now, now Mary had, had since found out, my sensual collect, she found out a short while ago that she, as a poor and a seemingly insignificant young virgin, was yet chosen by God to give birth to Jesus, the Savior of the world and the Son of of the Most High God. Mother Shepherd Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, told her, Mary, you have found favor with God because this son of yours will be great. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever for his kingdom will never end. And yes, Mary received and she embraced this extraordinary news. But, but the truth is, it was not until days later, after dwelling on this miracle that was about to take place in her, in her life, it, it was not until after her visiting her elderly relative Elizabeth, who also was miraculously with child, it was after that that Mary then this thought of God doing the unheard of miracle through her finally sunk in. How many of you still believe that God performs miracles? And evangelist Christine, the question is, what do you do when you realize the miracle God is about to do or has already performed in your life? What do you do? The Bible says that when it finally took hold of Mary about what this mighty God was about to miraculously fulfill through her that Mary began singing her song. Her song. Somebody say her song. Not, not, not Joseph's song. Not, 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 not Elizabeth's song. Not, 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 not Zachariah's song. Not even Gabriel the angel's song. But she started singing her song. When God does something marvelous and mighty and miraculous for you, saints, you ought to just start singing your song. Don't, 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 don't let this world tell you that you don't have a song to sing. You know what God has done for you. Don't let this world tell you that you don't sound melodiously perfect. Don't let this world gong you from singing your song, but sing your song. It will be a joyful noise unto the Lord. When we were growing up, Sister Parham, we used to hear this gospel song with the words, God gave me a song that even the angels. Mary sang her song. Her song that, that over the centuries, uh, uh, Brother Jermaine, have become known as the Magnificat. And in this song of Mary, Dr. Jones, known as the Magnificat, Mary shows at least three things that we ought to do every time God promises to do or about to do or has already done a miracle in our lives. Three things that we ought to do. The first thing 
uh, Jalen, we ought to do when God is working a miracle through us is to give him glory. <laughs> is to give him glory. Listen to it. Look, read it. It's in the Bible. Mary began her song singing, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. In, in taking hold of her miracle, uh, before Mary did or said or uttered anything else, Mary took the time to give God the praise and glorify his name. We all have seen many instances when we knew that it was God, not man. But, but we, we knew, we knew that, we knew that, we knew that it was God and not human doctor. It was God, not human judge. It was God, uh, not even ourselves, but it was God and God alone who performed a miracle and did a wondrous deed in our lives. Can, can I go deeper, church? We all, somebody say, we all have experienced many occasions when, when we did not have, and yet we were provided. When, when, when there was no way, and yet a way was made. When it was all over, and yet we began anew over and over and over again. And yes, we knew that these miracles occurred because it was nobody but Jesus. But, 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 but wait a minute, it's not enough. It's not enough for us to just know that it's nobody but Jesus. It, it's not enough for us to know, uh, to just, for us to just go on about our business after the miracle as if it's just another day of our lives. And, and it sure is not enough for us to just keep it to ourselves as if, as if God working out a miracle for us is nobody else's business but ours. That's not why God delivered you miraculously. For you to sit on it and stay cute and quiet about it. Oh no! The Lord lifted you from the gutter so that you can lift him up and glorify his name. God has graced you with immeasurably more than you could ask or imagine so that, so that you can speak unashamedly about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for you. God got you over the rough and high mountains. Do I have a witness? God walked you through the deep and dark valley. God took you through the fiery furnace. God crossed you over the raging waters. And every time Pharaoh was hot on your tail, God miraculously parted your Red Seas so that you can then praise God in the presence of the people. So stop downplaying God's miracles through you and turn your volume up. Exalt the Lord before others with joy. Testify about him before others with joy. Sing about the Lord before others with joy. First thing we ought to do as God is doing a miracle through us is like Mary. Give him glory. And then second of all, we ought to then humbly see ourselves as God sees us. We ought to see ourselves as God sees us. Mary knew how God saw her. Listen to what she wrote. Mary sang, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. Mary in her, listen to this, Mary in her meekness had no problem recognizing who she was as viewed by a mighty God. That she was just a servant, a humble servant at that. That she was just a lowly virgin who held no large status among men, who held no power in any palace, and who knew of no earthly riches in any of the market. Amen. And yet, somebody say, and yet? Amen. And yet, in all of her meek and lowly status, listen to this, 
Mary knew that God favored her to be blessed. Hallelujah. Mary said, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Some of us are mistaking God's reasons for blessing and favoring us. But here's the real news, Charles Street. It is not because of anything great about us. Y'all miss that. Some of us uh, have the wrong reasons. We mistake the wrong, wrong reasons why God favors us. I'm here to tell you, it's not because of anything great about us. Because there isn't anything. <laughs> it's not because we're better <laughs> or we're more of a child of God or what, we're more faithful than the person sitting next to us because we're not. It's not because we do deserve God's favor more than the one down the street who's going through some difficult times because we don't. God, in his blessing us with miracles, does not see any of us of ourselves as any greater or superior than anyone else. God, in his seeing us, does not see us of ourselves as more fit to stand before his presence. God, in his viewing us, does not see us of ourselves as more worthy and deserving enough to earn his favor. For if for the truth is, the Bible says, somebody say the word says, that we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God over and over again. We have all missed the mark. We have all missed the many signs of Jesus showing up in our presence. We have all been wayward sheep that have gone astray. We have all, we've lacked the righteousness, we've lacked holiness, we've lacked worthiness to even seek his face. And yet, somebody say, yet, God favors us. to our third point, and that is, Brother Anthony, that when God is working out a miracle through us, we ought to first not only give him glory, we ought to second not only see ourselves as God sees us, but third and finally, Kevin, we ought to see God as he is. <laughs> we ought to see God as he is. Mary, listen to this, Mary, in her mere meekness, saw God for who he was. Mercedes, in the 49th verse of her song, she called him the mighty one who has done great things for her. He called her the mighty one who has done great things for her. In verse 51, Mary calls him, Reverend Barbara, as the one who has performed mighty deeds with his arm through her, the humble. In other words, Reverend Jean, uh, listen to this. Mary saw that God, through the Holy Spirit coming down to her, was truly the mighty one meeting the meek. Mary's song to us, Angela, tells us that God can't use you when you think you're high and mighty. Oh, no. The high and mighty, Mary says, God brings down. Mary's song sings to us 
that God can't work through you when you proudly think that you're all that and you're all great. Oh no, the self-proclaimed proud and great, Mary says God scatters and he sends them away. Mary's song teaches us that God can't find room to do any miracles in your life when you think you're better and you're more fit and you're more favored than those you consider as the least of these. Oh, no. Somebody say, oh, no. Those who think they're better than others, God would simply park them aside and God would leave them just where they are and then God will baffle them by God instead doing miracles through the least of the <laughs> yes it's when we humbly see all that God's got and all that we're not that God will miraculously increase you more and give you more than you could ever conceive. It's when you can't even fathom all that God knows and you realize all that you don't know that God will then miraculously expand and broaden your wisdom. Confess all that you don't see. That God will then open your eyes that you may see. Glints of truth thou hast for thee. It's when you are at all of all that God is. And yet acknowledge all that you will never be. That God will let me. Each time, bring you to a new status. He'll land you on new heights. He'll shower you with new blessings. He'll give you a new name. He'll do a new thing. I got to sit down now. When the mighty, when the mighty, somebody say, when the mighty meets the meek. Yes, when God and Jesus works his way through the humble you, miracles take place. When the mighty meets the meek. Yes, when the Lord and his son does his great things through the lowly in you, then people will truly behold a new eighth wonder of this world. They will see, oh yes they will, they'll see the boundless beautiful, of the boundless beauty of a relationship involving two who in personality, in ways, and in nature are yet worlds apart. And yet, people will see this relationship only growing. People will see it growing deeper in love. Somebody say unconditional love. And then people will call you blessed. Amen. Your first, your first qualification of God doing a miraculous thing for you is to first see yourself humbly as a meek individual, lowly. God can use you. He'll come down from his mighty, omnipotent power. He'll work even through humble. Humble you, Diane. Humble me. Yes, he will. 
we think that there, we believe that there's somebody right here or there might be somebody who's, who will see this recorded service when it when it's placed on our YouTube page later this week. And if you're, if you're watching it at that moment, if you're someone who realizes that a mighty God has his eyes on you, if you're someone who now realizes that even as Mary, who was a young virgin woman who had no status, had no social status in the eyes of men, and yet God looked beyond all the queens and all the rulers and found Mary. If you believe, whether you are a woman or a man, that like God used Mary to do a miraculous and a mighty thing in your life, whether it's healing that you need, whether it's a financial deliverance that you need, whether it's uh, the restoration of your family, whether it's finding a lost one who you have not been in contact with for years, whatever that miracle is, God is able. And he will do it. He will do it when he works through a humble vessel, someone who realizes that without God, you're nothing. But with God, you have everything, amen? And so if you're here today, we invite you to uh, draw near to God by just um, praying these words after me. You can pray it in your spirit. You don't have to pray it out loud. But if these words apply to you today, and then pray them in your spirit, and God will hear. He's, he's that miraculous. He will even hear you as you pray silently. Father, I acknowledge that, Lord, first of all, I, I need you so much in my life. You know what I'm going through. God, I need, I need miracles. I, I, I need you to, to do what only you can do. And now, God, I, I open the door of my life. I invite your son, Jesus Christ, that Bethlehem day. Come on, Jesus, come into my life. Now, sit on the throne of my life. Jesus, I invite you to not only make yourself at home, but now you become the ruler of my life. Now work through me, Jesus. Keep me humble, keep me humble, and you remain high and exalted in my life. And God, I pray, Jesus, that you will impart to me as I now uh, confess my sins, as I repent them, as I come before you, God, seeking forgiveness. I believe, Jesus, that you will forgive all of my sins. You promised me in your word that you would. So as you forgive my sins, I thank you. As you now save my soul, as you now save my life, I thank you. Thank you for this gift of salvation. I thank you for now, God, pointing me toward eternity, the promised gift that you have for me, the hope that I have to live eternally with you. I thank you. Thank you now that I'm called the child of God. Receive you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And if you're looking for a church home, doesn't matter if you're if your grandmother, if your mother, if your mother-in-law, if your if your friend is a member of a church, but you're not, you can become a member of this church. All you need to do is you can see me after the worship service. Uh, we no longer have individuals come up, but because of COVID restrictions, but see me after the service or call this number 617-442-7770. That's 617-442-7770. Leave a message for me or leave a message for our associate pastor, Reverend Kate Nurse, and we'll get to you within 24 hours and welcome you into our church service. Is that all right, everybody? Amen. Yes. Storage is empty, and I am available to you. Let's sing that chorus. Lord, Lord, I'm available. I'm available.
wonderful week as you prepare. Uh, if you get a chance, if you have not as of yet, uh, go online today and for this week, listen to Reverend King's 8 o'clock sermon. Rather have presence than just listen because it's a good, it's a good message for us all as we move toward Christmas this week. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. So again, remember our Christmas Eve service is virtual. It's, it's in the online, 7 o'clock on our Friday morning. And then I know you'll have a blessed Christmas wherever you will be. Uh, we do ask that you also pray for Tobias Cowan. Tobias' father passed away. So please keep Tobias in your prayers as well. Amen. And let's also pray. I, I didn't announce at the 8.30 service, but uh, I was at the, the funeral last night spoke on behalf of the church in BMA for one of the pioneer women preachers of Boston, one of the first female pastors in Boston passed away, the Reverend Susie Thomas, who was the pastor of Mount Olive uh, Temple on North uh, in Mattapan. And uh, as many of you know, uh, she, she did. It wasn't no one behind her back. She willingly uh, in her later years, uh, when she wanted to retire, uh, she willingly invited uh, Bishop, who is now Bishop Robert Perry, uh, and his congregation to merge with her congregation, where it's now Mount Olive Kingdom Building. And it's working out really, really well after all these years. Her homegrown service was yesterday. Lord bless her to see 93 years. Amen. So it was a wonderful, it was a wonderful homegrown celebration last night. But please keep her family in your prayers as well. Pray for all. Pray for us all. And for those of you who will be traveling, we are praying, keeping you in our prayers as well. Amen? Amen. Let's stand for the benediction. Grace, peace, 